Thanks for joining us here on 90s Plus. I'm Chris Bianchi. Now, homelessness is obviously a big problem in Colorado and across the country. And the city of Denver is trying something different to get people off the streets and into permanent homes. Denver's city council re recently approved direct payments up to $12,000 for individuals experiencing homelessness in the city of Denver, with the city saying that they're going to closely track the results of this experiment to see how much it does or doesn't reduce the amount of homelessness on the streets. Now, for more on this different approach, how it might or might not work, we're now joined by John Parvensky, the president and CEO of the Colorado Coalition for the Homeless. Uh, John, thanks so much for joining us here today. Uh, glad to be here. Thanks. We, we really appreciate your time. Uh, John, uh, if you wouldn't mind uh, giving us your initial thoughts, your initial feedback about this program that the city of Denver uh, is set to implement as perhaps soon as this year. Sure. Well, I think anyone who's been in the city of Denver knows that homelessness is growing, visible homelessness is growing uh, throughout the city. And uh, while there are more and more uh, efforts to try to address it, um, the basic income approach uh, is one more tool in the toolbox to try to help people, particularly those who are just hanging on uh, by their fingernails, to be able to get out off the street, out of the shelters, and maybe get into housing. Um, you know, it's a modest program. It's not gonna. It's not enough to end someone's homelessness. Uh, we know that housing costs much more than that thousand dollars a month that would be the maximum someone would would get through this program uh, but for somebody who's able to work but is being uh, kept out of the housing market because the rents are more than what they're earning uh, this might make the difference to be able to pay that rent uh, put food on the table and be able to meet other necessities um, there's a nice research component to this so that we can see how much that cash assistance, particularly when combined to other efforts that are underway to expand the uh, quantity of, of affordable housing and the other health and mental health supports that somebody might need to be able to end their homelessness, uh, we can then start to see, do you grow this program or do you invest in other areas? I guess one initial question that comes to mind is that it is fairly innovative, is it not, to offer or to, in this case, uh, actively give uh, direct cash payments to individuals. Uh, what is your thought on that? And what sort of evidence and or research is there uh, behind this uh, proposed program here? Right. So there's some uh, emerging research. Um, some cities in California have uh, implemented this. Uh, there Certainly, it's uh, more of a concept that we've seen in Europe, uh, where uh, basic cash income for citizens have been uh, part of their social safety net for many years. And again, while it's not enough to meet everyone's need, um, the, those communities and those states also have invested in expanded affordable housing, expanded access to health care, and, uh, and really reducing barriers to employment. So when you combine those two things, it's not much different than the earned income tax credit, where you have somebody who may be working at minimum wage, not being able to bring enough home to be able to pay the rent, to be able to meet other needs of their family or just their own needs. Uh, but when combined with, um, with employment, combined with this cash assistance, uh, it certainly makes uh, life much more easier for them to make the ends meet uh, than without that assistance. So you mentioned that this has been tried in California as well as throughout uh, parts of Europe. In fact, maybe more of a mainstay there in Europe. Um, what, what are the results or what are some of the preliminary results of how that experiment has gone there? Well, some of the initial research has indicated that, you know, particularly for those folks who uh, only have marginal barriers or limited uh, barriers to getting back into housing, this can be a game changer. For the majority of people experiencing homelessness, particularly families, um, you know, where the cost of housing is just so much greater than the thousand dollars a month, um, it's really not enough to change uh, or to make a difference. But when combined with other initiatives, 
uh, such as uh, housing assistance, employment assistance, uh, access to health and mental health care. Uh, it can, com in combined, uh, make a difference in terms of helping create a pathway out of homelessness uh, for those who uh, are lucky enough to be able to receive this help. John, what percentage, you mentioned that the majority of people, this may not be uh, particularly, or may not do everything that's intended to do. What percentage of people would you say are marginally homeless, are perhaps close enough to where this amount of money could really um, get them off the streets? So according to our most recent point in time count, you know, we've seen as many as uh, a third of those experiencing homelessness are experiencing it for the first time. Uh, there are people who have just lost their housing, maybe because the rents have been raised more than what they're able to pay. Um, many in, who are in the shelters are, are currently working, uh, but not earning enough to be able to get that first month's rent, a security deposit, uh, or even to be able to make the difference between what they can afford for rent and, uh, and what the uh, average rent in, in our community costs. So those are the folks that this would most likely um, be helpful in terms of making a difference, creating that pathway out of homelessness. I'm gonna put you a little bit on the spot here, John, if you don't mind. Uh, what do you think of this program overall? Is this a good use of the city's resources to try and prevent homelessness? So, you know, it's a limited investment at this point. Uh, there's a good research component to it. So um, it's great to be able to measure it. Um, you know, what we've seen, and we tend to see people who are longer term homeless, those who have the most vulnerabilities, uh, health, mental health, uh, addictions, and other um, issues, it's less likely to, to meet the needs of the visible homeless, those that we see sleeping on the streets, um, but it uh, can marginally make a difference for a segment of the population. So if we combine this again with other initiatives that are expanding affordable housing generally uh, and linking people to those resources, again, having extra uh, money to be able to make, to meet their basic needs it could make all the difference in the world. You mentioned adding affordable housing in there. What, what else could the city um, state based on your research, based on what you know, uh, working with the Colorado Co Coalition for the Homeless, what else could the city be doing in your view to try and reduce the amount of homelessness in the city? Well, it, it all starts with housing. That's certainly the basic uh, common denominator of people who are homeless is they don't have a place of their mm -hmm. own. Uh, to live tonight. Um, some have greater barriers than others. So uh, in addition to creating that supply of affordable housing, uh, we need to make sure that uh, the barriers that prevent people from accessing it um, are addressed. So if you have somebody who may have a criminal justice history, um, landlords will typically screen them out and, uh, and rent to somebody who doesn't have that problem. You have somebody with a domestic violence history, um, you have the same problem uh, of, of families and individuals being screened out. So if we can address the barriers that prevent people from accessing uh, the new affordable housing that's being created, uh, we'll see uh, a bigger impact in terms of reducing the number of people on the streets. Yeah, very interesting, John. Um, any final thoughts, anything we haven't covered yet that you'd like to add about this topic? I think when more, most people think about homelessness, they're thinking again about that visible um, homelessness, either the encampments, the tents that are popping up in almost all quadrants of the city, um, as well as people who are um, sleeping night after night in the shelters. Uh, you know, that number is over 4,000 when combined. Um, clearly, the, we need to expand uh, our supportive housing programs or affordable housing programs at a, great, at a scale much greater than what uh, is currently in place, much greater than what a basic income program could afford to do. Uh, but if we, um, are, we want to work on all cylinders, we want to try all approaches, uh, because we know that if we just continue to do what we're doing, uh, we're falling further and further behind. 
Well, John, excellent insight and, uh, and research. And we really appreciate a few minutes of your time and lending us some of your expertise about this program and how, again, maybe this, um, hopefully optimistically, we can start to uh, reduce the amount of homelessness here in the city of Denver. Uh, John Parvensky, president and CEO of the Colorado Coalition for the Homeless. Thank you so much for your time here on Nine News Plus today. Welcome.